there's always people that tell you you're not good enough or coaches and I know I'm good enough. I know I have talent. I don't think I have anything to prove to myself. I know I can do it. I don't think I have anything to prove to others. He's always been focused on what he wants to achieve and you only get there if you actually make sacrifices and you, you commit yourself to it. So, to be honest, I didn't expect anything less. And now Shepard, oh yes! Now it's James Riccovene with the shot, trying to roll his man here, Shepard! It's going to sit up, Shepard controlling it! Shepard! Yeah, my parents and my brother have been, you know, there for me the whole time and they've been amazing and, you know, I love them to bits. Um, they would drive me three or four times a week to wherever I needed to go and they'd make sure I could get there. They'd make sure, you know, I had all the boots and I'm grateful and I'm lucky enough to say that my parents provided me with an environment where I had everything that I needed. But I'm very grateful for, you know, what they've done for me. When I was 16, I was playing for Ipswich Town and they didn't offer me a scholarship. And then I went back with one of my coaches um, at Histon, which was a lower level team at the time, just to start enjoying my football again. And then I got offered a trial at Lane Orient and I think I was there for six weeks, I believe, trialing. My dad was picking me up from school and he was driving me down there because at the time it was probably over an hour, hour and a half away from where we lived and we'd drive there three, uh, three or even four times a week to play games. Eventually they said they liked me and wanted to offer me a scholarship. Coming to the end of my scholarship at Leighton Orion, I heard some you know, people coming up to me and my parents and saying, oh, we've been told you're getting you know, a professional contract. And you, know, you try not to listen to all of that because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and in the end, they didn't offer me one. Um, so it was a bit, you know, it hurt a little bit. Um, I put everything I had into that and you know you have the dream of getting the professional contract and all of that stuff. Um, but I, I moved back home. So I moved back down to, to Northampton with my parents. There was something that was just, the consistency wasn't there. And it just made me not really enjoy my football as much as I wanted to. I spoke to my parents and I said, I'm really not enjoying my football right now. I'm not sure what I want to do and I have an Australian passport because of my mum, she was born in Perth. And I just said to them, I think I'm going to go to Australia. Our senior coach, George Katsakis, um, sent me a video and he said, look, I think I've got someone special. Um, and I looked at the video, but I was impressed with um, what I saw. And um, yeah, the rest is history. I was at a Drake concert with a few of my friends and my best mate and my brother and I got the phone call to say, oh, there's this team interested, do you want to go? And I said yes and he goes, oh, you've got to be there by Saturday. And it was like Thursday or something like that and I was like, okay. So I drove back from the concert and packed all my stuff and hopped on a plane and flew straight over. Cool, well, I'm pretty sure George threw him in the deep end within, I don't know, less than a week of him being here. And one of the players the day before got injured and he was like, I'm going to play you because I need to, you know, field a team kind of thing. So I was straight in and I played really well. I didn't score that game, but I got an assist and just did really well. And from that day, I just played pretty much every game. Into the middle, Petri is there. Right's one challenge. Now feeding the ball through. Here's Shepard, under pressure and shooting into the bottom left corner. It's 2-0 to Heidelberg after only eight minutes. Shepard scores, Petri with the assist.
originally met um, at Heidelberg. I came late to the party. Being two Brits overseas, um, you know, you connect. Otherwise, you'll be stuck, you'll be lost, really. Ah, oh, look, I don't think personally, I don't think I've ever met someone so dedicated uh, to doing what they love, uh, really, you know footballs ups and downs and some difficult mental battles as well but Kane seems to chug along with you know just putting that all behind and only looking forward so yeah You're not dedicated like Kane you have to think of two plan B's and that I'm the plan B he's the plan A <laughs> so you have to think outside the box and that's where I am today So it was always my intention from the moment I came to Australia that it was I would like to go to the A-League. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it or get there. Um, I knew that some players from the second division would go into the A-League and that before. Yeah, I just had the intention that I wanted to go to the A-League and I had a really good season that year. I probably scored the most goals I've scored with 20 goals in 25 or 26 games. And yeah, I just started messaging some coaches and some people that I knew were part of these A-League clubs and just to see if I got a reply and, and luckily I did. Yeah, putting pen to paper with Newcastle was really exciting. I was really proud of myself. Um, my family were obviously really excited. My partner was really excited. Moving up there, you know, was all good. And again, it all happened so fast. So I went up there and trialled for two weeks and again I was straight into it. We were straight into the league and I was on the bench and it all happened pretty fast. He's always had been focused on what he wants to achieve and you only get there if you actually make sacrifices and you, and you, you, know, you commit yourself to it. So to be honest I didn't expect anything less. Here behind Shepherd. Two moment for the Newcastle Jets. First half stoppage time. What a moment for Kane Shepherd. Beautiful work. This is the goal of a poacher. Short, near post run. Beautiful outside of the left foot. And look at the Brisbane defender he beat to do it. Avram Papadopoulos. And as we've said repeatedly through his time in the A League, that's not something that attackers do easily. Even more credit to Kane Shepherd who breaks his duck. I think that's one of been one of the, the hardest things for me to deal with. You know, you go to a club and then you get released and you start identifying yourself that you're not good enough because they don't want me and, and things like that as well, when really it's just an experience. Like you've gone there and the, the experience itself hasn't, hasn't worked out the way you want it to, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not good enough. It's just that perception or, you know, that's how you perceive that, that experience. I know I'm good enough, I know I have talent, I don't think I have anything to prove to myself, I know I can do it, I don't think I have anything to prove to others. That's probably one of the biggest things, you know, COVID has, has taught me. I always used to train for somebody else, or I always used to train because of another another team or have to be ready to go on trial. But during COVID, I would train for myself and I would train because mentally it would keep me in a good place because we were locked down. No shops were open, we couldn't do anything, we couldn't go anywhere. So I'd go to the pitch and I'd just enjoy being in the pitch because, you know, 
maybe take things for granted and during COVID we didn't and we wanted to do those things and even just going into the gym I wasn't training because you know I've got a trial in two weeks I was still being prepared for it because of the training I was doing but it wasn't like I have to be ready because of this it was I was ready and I was just enjoying it because for my own mental health and to do that was was really nice and it made a change and you know it was it was just nice important to remember you know why you started and you know go back to those times because a lot of people forget and I, I forgot and you know going back there and thinking about it and looking at it you know I remember just running and just playing and you know you remember why you actually play and why you enjoy it. When I was at Newcastle, we had people come in and they talked to us about things outside of football, charity, all that stuff. And my brother has autism based in England and he used to come watch me play and I did some research and I wanted to be like an ambassador for, for a company. But they took a really long time to get back to me and in the end I was like, oh, I'm just gonna start my own thing. So we just started and it's called the KS Foundation and we started doing sensory rooms. So our stadium, families could come in they could go into a box and they could go out into the stand because autism sometimes affects them like sensory overload, so noises, light, all that stuff, too many people and things like that. So we just basically provide them a safe environment where they could watch it, go inside if they need to, which was really cool. And then we started some football clinics, so just so they could you know, play, scoring goals pretty much, teaching them how to kick it in the goal and just have fun. Pretty much, and that's been really good. I started that in Newcastle, um, and the more that I've done it, the more that I've realised none of it's a, it's about me. Yes, it's the KS Foundation because I started it, but it's none of it's about me. It's about the kids, it's about the families, and just seeing them enjoy themselves um, makes you really appreciate, you know, what you do and what you what you have, and how privileged we are to play in the A League or football in general. Um, so that's been really good and yeah, I've, I've loved every moment of it and like I said, the more I do it, the more I realise, you know, none of it's about me, it's, it's all, all about them. Yeah, Jo's been amazing. She's so supportive. She's always pushed me. She's always wanted me to, you know, strive for football and never let me give up and reminded me of why I wanted to do it. and all that stuff and yeah, I've been very lucky to, to have her in my corner. Um, and yeah, she's, she's been amazing. She's an amazing woman herself. She doesn't just tell me what I want to hear. She'll tell me as well and she'll say, you know, you need to just basically buckle up and just get on with it sometimes as well. And it's not easy and you know, that's life. And sometimes she gives me that little hard nudge that I need as well. And she's not just like, oh, it's, you know, it's okay and this and that, she'll tell me, no, just get on with it kind of thing. But at the right time, she's been amazing. That's all I can, all I can say really.